Hello everyone, this is Jimmy Beach. Welcome to this exposure webinar. Within the next few minutes, we'll get through a few different scenarios for creating layers. Uh, I'm sorry, creating layer masks in exposure, and we'll touch on a few things such as polygons, markers, and then how to mix those things together inside of your workflow in exposure. Okay, so before we begin, as I am working on audio issues right now, I just want to make sure that everybody can hear me, so bear with me just a second. One more time. Okay. Well, I made a few adjustments on the fly, so hopefully everything will work itself out in the end. So, uh, anyway, back to what we were going to talk about. Exposure is our advanced non-destructive raw photo editor and organizer. We can use it to copy images from camera cards, apply editing adjustments, um, uh, creative effects, you can export finished photos, and you can even print right from within exposure. A uh, quick history lesson is that about 16 years ago, exposure was developed for film photographers, and the transition from developing uh, analog film in the darkroom using chemicals to processing in digital images using a computer was a tough thing for for photographers to grasp and exposure's accurate film emulation presets helped help them with that change uh, by giving photographers the look and feel of their favorite films that they were used to working with back only this time digital so as we get into the demonstration, I would want to point out that there will be time at the end reserved for answering any questions you may have uh, if they're not handled during the lesson today. Also, we are monitoring the chat, so if you have some specific questions, you can go ahead and put them up there, or you can put them in the Q&A. That is available as well. Let me. I'm going to do one more microphone check just to make sure yep we're all good okay so let us begin uh, I have a bunch of images today that I'll be using and they come from a bunch of different photographers um, so I'm going to just announce those photographers as I work with their images and um, yeah so I wanted to thank all of them at the beginning so I might as well start that now uh, the first one this is David James uh, Jadot, this image right here. So let's go to his folder. So remember when we're in exposure, we can look, um, we can just navigate through, uh, anywhere in our, our, on our hard drive, excuse me. So this is the same file management that I have there. So I'll just type, click on his, uh, folder. And then here are the, Im here's the image that we want to make edits to. Now, I have not edited this yet. Um, so, or I have already edited this, excuse me, and I have so that we have kind of an idea as to where we're going to go with this. Um, I also noticed that I have something on that I want to turn off, and that's the hover help. So I'm going to open up my preferences and turn off the hover help. That's just so that all those pop-ups that come up and help give you more information about the software. I don't want those up when I'm giving a demonstration because then there's a lot of blinky things on the screen and it's a little bit distracting. So I'll open up the panel on the right side and we can see in the layers panel here on the top that there are a number of layers and there's some selections made with them. So what I've done to this image, I will uh, hold down the backslash key to show you the before. It's a little bit flat. Also, the, um, the sweater, you can see that the sweater is a little bright and it's very sharp. And so when I let go, that sweater is a little bit more toned down uh, and her eyes read a little bit better. They're really nice and punchy and her skin doesn't have an overtone to it. She's also, uh, anyway, I think the image looks a little bit better this way. So that is, this is the raw shot right here and then our after. Okay, so we're going to remake this and I'll show you how to use the tools to create these selections to uh, do what we did to this image. Uh, so we're going to recreate what we did here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to make a virtual copy just like this. Now exposure is going to open my virtual copy. So I'll reset it right here. So now this is where we're starting out. Here's our image. 
here is our image um, with no edits to it. Okay. Now, uh, when we're putting edits or when we're um, making edits to an image, we kind of, I like to have an idea as to what I'm going to do. So I have my auto adjustments and that's kind of where I begin. So uh, the basic panels where we usually start editing. So I'll just click auto and we'll see what the uh, what exposures intelligent adjustments are telling me. And that's that they're saying that we need to bring the image down a little bit. It's a little too bright and I'm going to hold the backslash key so we can see before. And yes, we can see that her skin look at uh, I'm going to point a couple of things out here that I like and a couple of things that I don't. What I like is that the color in her sweater looks really nice. What I don't like about the sweater is that it's, it looks almost sharper than her face does right here. And that's a little distracting. Now, the before, her skin looks really clean and nice. The after, her skin on her face looks a little too saturated for me. So the before again, we can see her eyes right here are definitely nice and sharp and have good contrast. The after, that gets a little bit muddy. It's a little too dark, I'd say. Okay, now that's what exposure, uh, because of what I have set up here, this is my auto adjustments, and I have the auto adjustments set to kind of around the middle. And I have them all on except for white balance, right? Okay, so I want to, I'm gonna undo the exposure level. Nah, I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit. Okay, not quite as much as what the uh, auto adjustments put there. So this is my first layer. I'm going to rename that layer just so I don't get lost. And that's auto adjustments, not adjectives. All right, so we have our first layer. So let's make another layer and I'm gonna address some of those things that I pointed out. First one being the sweater, okay? So I'm gonna add the layer. This is going to be our sweater layer. I don't even need to rename it. We'll be able to see the thumbnail here in just a moment when we put this mask on. So I'll select the layer mask right here. Then um, I, I'll under draw mask right here. I'm going to select use the selection tools for our sweater. Now, when you know what you want and you can see clearly where the boundary is, like this green sweater, it's very clear wherever it is on the image where the edge of that is. So I would use the polygon tool for that. I think that's be the quickest and easiest way. So I'm going to um, draw it on here. I'm going to make the base width of these points a little bit wider so that as I draw this on, they're just a little bit larger so I can be, a, it's a little more forgiving for me so I don't have to use as many points. All right. And add a couple more. There we go. Almost done. Cool. Okay, so that was really quick. And I'm pretty much done. That was easy. Okay, so that was a really easy selection with the polygon tool. We had that nice crisp edge of the green sweater and it picked right up on that. Okay. Now, with this done, we have our selection made. I don't really need to do anything else to it. So I have, this is my sweater selection. Okay, so this layer now. I'm going to close the, uh, our masking panel here, right? So now I can make adjustments to this uh, layer and it will only affect the sweater. So if I hover over the layer mask, you can see our sweater is highlighted or you can see the uh, red coloring. That is the option that I'm using here. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do the same thing. I want to select her skin this time. So last time we knew exactly what we wanted and that was we used the polygon tool for it. This time it's a little bit curvier and so I'm still going to use the polygon. I'm still going to raise the base width a little bit, but I'm going to hold the Alt key and then you can see that my cursor turns into the little um, circle and I can trace around the skin is what I'm selecting this time. So it's pretty easy to work with. I will need another one. Hold down Alt and do, 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 do. trace around her like this. Bam. Pretty easy. Okay. So we've done that. Now let's take a look at it. Now that I've, if I, if you hover over the um, work area here, the preview, then you will see the, all the mask, um, come up, all the mask tools come up. So if you hover over the tools in the panel, they'll disappear. And then you just see the selection. You can see how it's red. 
All right. Now, we're missing a little bit of information, but we have most of the skin where we want it. So now we will add some a few markers to just help refine this selection a little bit. So I will add a add marker. That's the one with the plus on it. Okay. Now we can change the base width and the border width of our uh, markers that we add here. So I'm going to do that on the fly with my mouse wheel. And you can see the size of it getting larger there. And if I want the border width to be wider, I can hold the Alt key as I make those adjustments with the mouse wheel. You can see it there. And so I want a pretty small area because I know I want the skin here, but I don't want the sweater. And I also know on the hair, I want the edge, but I don't want the hair. So what I'm going to do is just click here once and swipe my way down our cheek. And it should pick that up. Great. Okay. Same thing right here by her eye. I'm just going to touch it right here. And you can see on the edge right, um, right by where her hair is, I want it to pick up that aggregate inside of there without selecting that hair. Good. Okay, so now we have a couple of little tweaks to make. That's We want to add one that's over here on the side in the corner here where her shoulder kind of blends in with the background there or with the reflection, excuse me. So if we make adjustments to the skin, this area here is going to be a little bit tricky. So we just have to be considerate of that. So I'll just click and drag up. I know my edge is in there. Okay, so that did add a little bit too much, but that's okay. We'll come back to it. Now, there's a little bit here on the ear that I'm also going to tweak as well. So I'm going to shrink this down as almost as tiny as it can go and click on her ear and click on her ear. There is a tiny little bit right there. I'm afraid that one's going to pick up, but I'll try it one more time. Okay. Now, I do want to point out that you'll notice that I'm not zooming in and out a whole bunch. When you zoom in and out, Exposure will re-render the selection that it's making, and that just slows me down. So I like to work really quick when I'm masking, and I just save it, or I just work as well as I can uh, at this one zoom level. Anyway, okay, so now let me add uh, let's add a um, an exclude, excuse me, exclude marker. And the same rules apply here, where the base width is the inner circle of my brush tip, and the border width is the outer circle and you can adjust it on the fly with the Alt button. You can also adjust it after you have it down. So after I have my uh, marker made, then I can come back here and I can make adjustments to it just like this. So what I'm going to do is you set the inner width very wide, so it's right next to her shoulder. You can see it in the preview. And then I'm going to turn the border width down, saying this is the small area where I want you to find that edge. So that makes it a little bit easier. Okay, that's pretty good. Man, that one's really fighting me. So I'm gonna add one more add marker right on that corner. Oh, you know what's happening? I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna try an edge marker right here and say, this is the edge. All right, so now we have this selection made. Now, this selection, because it's a person, we can see that there's a little bit of like edge or haloing right here around that on her skin, on her shoulder. We can't really see it on her face. That's a really good and crisp selection. You can see uh, on the hair here, that's pretty good, but there's a little bit here on her, right by her eyebrow that it has missed. So I'm gonna add another a marker right there because that's not getting it. Okay, so anyway, uh, so there's some a little bit that I want to pick up there to make sure that I have all of these boundaries in. And that's where I use the matting slider right here. So I'm going to drag that up just to make sure that I have all of those little bits and parts of that selection. So now I have the selection made. It's taken us, I, we can see we have 10 markers. So it's taken 10 different So we have 10 different um, markers that we use to make this one selection of all of her skin. So it really wasn't that bad. I think we did one down here for the polygon. Okay, so uh, back to this skin. Now we have our skin selected. Okay, so now what we can do is that we can apply our edits to uh, bring these things closer to the way that we want them to be, right? So we have our skin selected, we have our sweater selected. 
we can do so let's do uh something that's really simple and that's that when i talked about how this looks a little crisp to me her sweater right here and so what i want to do is instead of adding sharpening to her face which can sometimes mess up people's face <laughs> uh, you can add some blurring strategically to this um, sweater and that will help it look a lot better so here's what we're going to do so normally we go to the sharpening panel to uh, perform sharpening i'm going to go to the focus panel and do the opposite of sharpening which is blur okay so there are some presets here i can just grab from one of those really easy this soft diffuse glow and then that will apply on to the sweater let's zoom back here so um so we are at i want to make sure i'm zoomed in correctly here we are at a one-to-one -one view now yeah that's the right select whoop dang it okay so we're at a one-to-one -one view and I have a 15 opacity on the blur. Let's move that up to like 30. Okay. Well, it's rendering. Okay. Well, as that sits there and twiddles for me, there we go. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, so now um, we can see that the that crisp edges of her eyelashes right here are actually in fact a little bit more crisp and clear than the sweater the knit of the sweater um right here in her uh, shirt so now now the skin so the skin has a little bit too much color in it right i liked the the, the flat look i'm going to hold the backslash key so we can see the before image so we can see that her skin here is like white and clean. It looks healthy. Now it looks a little bit too colored for me after I did the, um, has a little too much color in it for me. So I'm gonna go to a preset. And if you've listened to any of my videos or anything or suggestions that we make before, that is that the color films print low contrast. Presets are great op options for making uh, edits to skin specifically. So Kodak Portrait NC uh, is a really well-known preset or a film st stock for shooting portraits. That's why it was it was developed for shooting portraits. There's two varieties, NC, which is neutral color, and VC, which I think is vivid color. It might be very, it's something with a V. I think it's vivid color. Anyway, um, so there's two varieties of that. There's one that's a little bit more flat, 160, and then there's one that's gonna give you a little bit more contrast, and that's 400. Now, I do like what it's doing. You can see how it's taking that coloring just a little bit down, but it still has that nice contrast to it. Her skin looks great, I love that. Okay, so that's easy. So now, the only thing that I would do to this image that I did on the original one was add a little bit more to her eyes so that that's the first thing that you read when you look at the image. And you know what? I'm also going to make that sweater a little darker. So I'll go to the sweater layer, number two, and then on the basic tab, I'm just going to drag the exposure slider down, and then you can see how it updates there. That's way too dark. You'll also notice that when you make adjustments to pieces or parts that you select, when, the further you go with things like exposure, the more careful you have to be when you make that selection. Anyway, just a little darker. Okay, now, okay, one more layer, and on this layer, I'm going to use a different uh, type of um, masking, and that's the brush. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to add, before I do that, let me go back to the layer. Before I go to brush on what I want this layer to do, let's fix it now. And that is I want to add a little bit of uh, dynamic contrast. That'll do a good thing. And I want to add a little bit of clarity and a touch of vibrance. Now you can see like the image right now, when I did that, it doesn't really look all that great. I understand, don't worry, trust me. Okay. Oh, I'm leave that up. And I think that's no, I'll add a little sharpening too, just a touch. There we go. Now. Now we have some edits that are made to this this uh, image here on this layer. I'm going to use my brush tool as I click on the layer mask, it clicks me 
or it opens up the brush panel or the mask panel. And with a low flow, I want to, mm, 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 mm. I'm on the eraser. I want to brush with low flow. I want to brush on her eyes just to give them a little bit of pop. Now I'm just barely touching them. And then I make my brush a little bit more refined and then I get a little tighter and bada bing. That's what we do. Okay. So if that's a little bit too much here, I'm going to close my uh, brush panel. Now, if I, if I turn this layer on and off, you can see that there's a little bit of a punch to her eyes and that's exactly what I wanted. Just a tiny little bit. Okay. So that's one option for one image. Uh, we use the polygon tool. In, in this scenario, the polygon tool, and then we did a couple of tweaks just to uh, work on a portrait. So let's head on over now and take a look at a different image in a different scenario. So here I am in my folders panel in exposure, and we'll go down to Michael Gilman. He's got some great shots in here. And the one I wanna take a look at is one of these on the beach. Ah, here it is. I'm going to reset this and I'll close this dock. Okay. So here we are. Here's our image. We have a mountain in the, in the background. We have a small selection that we want to make. We want to do a really quick edit to it and we don't want it to take much time at all because you know, well, I like editing in the computer, but not everybody shares that passion. Anyway, let's hit auto and see what that does. Mm, makes it really dark. Nope, I don't like that. I'm going to fix my auto adjustments. I, they're making my images dark today. So I'm just going to drop down the, um, or open up the menu. And then my exposure bias right here is at zero. So I'm just going to turn it up a little bit there and then hit it again. There, it's a little bit brighter. Anyway, there we go. That's what I want. All right, so now I have my automatic adjustments that I did just to make sure this image works the way that it looks right now. I like it. Uh, whenever I'm looking at an image like this, what I do is what I call the squint test. So if you squint your eyes as small as you can or as tight as they can go, if you still read the horizon in the image, then the horizon's strong enough. So you don't need to add any more layers or masking or anything to that to make that more emphasized. It still reads as the one of the most fundamental parts of the image. So the other fundamental part is this mountain that we need to get rid of. So I'm going to add a new layer, or we need to modify this. Go to the brush panel. This time, I'm going to go to the selection tools, and I'm going to uh, use a, um, let's just use this. So I'll use a border marker, and uh, I'll make that a little bigger. So a border marker, all I'm going to do is, oops. All I'm going to do for a border marker is mark all the way over, draw all over the whole thing, just like that. And then I will click an add marker and that just tells exposure this thing right here that I'm going to select is the thing I want. And I didn't click. There we go. Oh, that did such a good job. I'm going to do that again. That was so cool. So I'll reset the layer mask. We'll go right here to the uh, border marker. That's the one with a line in it. And then I want to make my base width larger. And I'll swipe right over the top really carefully, just like that. If you're not seeing that I'm making a lot of mistakes by design. And then I'll add my little guy there and just say that this is what I want. And it selects it. Now, now it's easy. All we can do is uh, we can raise our exposure a little bit to bring that, give a little bit of detail to that mountain. And uh, even if we wanted to, we can give it a little bit of clarity, but I don't think I would. I think I'm actually going to reduce the clarity just a touch. And I will give it a little bit more color with a vibrant slider. But that's really, really quick and easy, an adjustment like that, to bring up a small object where we can select and make edits very quick. All right, let's check another one of these beautiful seaside images out. We are, I'm going to hit, uh, let's stay in Michael Gilman's folder. Um, this one, this one, actually, I really love how this one's turning. This one turns out. So, so this is kind of where we're going. I'll reset it 
to um, the original, okay? So when I, when I do the squint test on this image, what stands out to me are these three bollards, I think, or concrete blocks in the foreground. They kind of blend together when I squint my eyes. So what I wanted to do was add a little bit more contrast to these, make them pop and read in the foreground. And then I think I want to bring the sky up a little bit. It's a little bit dark. So that's my goals for this image. And I'm going to use a couple of different ways of selecting. So um, I'll go to, let's, let's do uh, automatic adjustments on the back layer. You can see that it gives us some more contrast to work with. So now I'm going to make my selection on a new layer. Click on the uh, layer mask. You can see it right there. It's selecting everything. And let's do, I'll just use, um, yeah, we can just use border markers the same way we did before. That's easy. So a border marker is just like this. I want to select this thing. I want to select this thing. And I want to select this thing. And then I have my add markers or my include markers. Now, when I do add these markers, I want to make sure that I'm selecting all of what I want. So in this case, there's a lot of different um, shades and values. So I will select and then drag over just to make sure that I'm kind of following that. Yeah, that's pretty quick and easy. That thing and this thing right here. Right here. Okay. Pretty, pretty standard. Did a good job. Uh, oops. Nope, that was the wrong thing. I accidentally hit the wrong button there, guys. Escape. Okay. Uh, I need one more include marker. There's one little bit here that's not quite up to snuff. Oh, it selected too much. So every time that you make a click or when you add a new marker down, you can always make little edits to it after it's down. And I'll add an exclude marker just because I got a little bit of extra there. And here. That's pretty good. Oh, man. All right. So this is kind of the workflow. I'm going through and I'm adding uh, exclude and include markers to refine this, the edges. And so just when I see a little bit over, you can see where, I, where I'm making these um, clicks to place these markers. I am using the border width, which is the dotted line, to get near to the edge that I want. That's telling the algorithm that's where I want the edge to be. Look in this area for an edge. The area that is inside of the inner circle in my marker here that I'm about to make, that's area I know that does not have an edge. That's something I don't want because this is an exclude marker. Don't want. Okay, so that's going to be the quickest way to uh, have that be refined in the way that you want it to. Okay, so now I have my selection of my three objects in the front. And I can close the um, panel and then make my edits here. Okay, so one of the things that I would do here would be to add dynamic contrast. So dynamic contrast, uh, actually this is a really good stop up. Uh, point that I want to make here. Contrast and dynamic contrast are a little bit different and you can see it in this scenario. If I add contrast to these, you can see how much color comes out. You know, how much color is reflected, the pinks and stuff like that in those. If I use dynamic contrast, it blends in all of the highlight tones and things like that that are coming from this as well. So the color itself is not going to be messed with as much with the dynamic contrast slider. Okay, so I will drag that up and I will reduce the haze level a little bit to add a little bit more contrast in the front. I'm going to also add a little bit of regular contrast as well because I like what these really dark black objects now give a little bit more weight to this image. Okay, so, uh, we, so we made that selection. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to do was add a selection or add a, um, an edit to the top to bring that sky up a little bit. And so... A quick way to do that is to use our presets. So I'll drag, I'll open up the presets panel, and one of the presets that I know works is under in the graduated filters category. There is a darkened skies preset. I mean, darkened sky preset. I said I said skies, but red sides. Anyway, 
basic English. We learn it here eventually. Yeah, all right. So I've selected on that layer and that darkened the sky, which is not what I want. So in on this layer, this darkened sky layer that I just added, there are some edits that have been made. You can see where the arrows that go around the uh, reset arrows here. That means that there's been edits to the basic panel and the tone curve panel. So on the basic panel, I'm going to raise that exposure level up instead of lower it. And on the tone curve panel, I don't see any edits on the tone curve panel. So I'm going to leave that alone. So yeah, that, it was that easy. So now we have our sky is a little bit more bright. Now, one of the things that happens when we're making adjustments to exposure specifically is that in a reflection situation like this, this bright value is going to be the same when it is reflected at 100%. So that means that we also need to add a little bit more to the foreground here. And so we can add a brush or take a little bit of brushing with a large brush to add a little bit of that brightening um, value to this foreground here. And I'm just very gently painting in some random swipes in that area to bring that up with the same edit that I placed on the sky above. So if we take a look at the before and the after, you can see that it brings that up just like that. Okay. Cool. Mm, you know, I'm going to do a little bit something different here too. On the basic panel, I am going to, um, I'm going to bring down the, um, or I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to bring down the highlights and I'm going to raise the whites. Now you can see that it makes that sky pop a little bit more when I raise them really high that blows all of that out. But that blown out, I want a little bit of that blown out bit because it makes it look like it's a little bit brighter. Okay, so I'm going to tweak that just a little bit. And so I'm, I'm bringing the highlights down because that's going to give more contrast between those bright values. If we raise them both, we actually have less contrast between the whites and highlight values. So if I bring these lower, I'm going to add a little bit of contrast to that. Okay, now after we make any of these adjustments in exposure, one of the great things about the, our layer system here is that we're working on a raw image and we can adjust everything. So I'm going to take the opacity of that layer down a little bit just to uh, make it more subtle. So now let's hold down the backslash key and we can see the before and the after. This uh, note, these three billiards in the front and all of the extra contrast that's added to them. Before and after. Okay, cool. All right, let's move on to another scenario. So we did a couple of outdoor shots. Uh, let's try, let's try another portrait. So we'll go to Julian Berman. Okay, here is a shot right here. I'm gonna reset. All right. So here's a shot from Julian Berman. Um, it's a portrait. This is going to be a really quick, I mean, well, this, the selection tools are quick, so yay. Let's do this real quick. We will select, um, I do want to make a few, oh, ah, wrong button. I do want to make a few edits to this photo. You can see that it looks a little flat to me right now, so we can hit the auto button. You can see it punches it up a little bit and gives it some more contrast. Okay, but let's say that it's not quite enough contrast for us and we want to make a selection of him separate of the uh, background. So we're going to work a little bit different this time in our selection. And what I mean is, I'm going to add a layer here, and instead of using our selection tools to select this fine specimen here in the image, we are the, we're, let's select the background because that's easier and more simple, and then we can... Um, just invert it. So uh, if I add a, if I just do an add marker, then I can just kind of draw a line and you can see what happens between the base width and the border width respectively. So the base width is going to be all of what is selected. You can see how it's really hard edged there. And the border width is where photo or where exposure is searching for an edge. 
Now you can see that it's searching for an edge and it's starting to pick it up right there by his shoulder. Okay, so I'm going to take that and delete that because I was just showing you. So we'll go back and add an, and put an add marker out here and want to make sure that the base width and border width settings on that add marker are good. And then scribble in a bit like that and it should make a selection. Great. And I'll do the same thing on this other side. Now, I know this might seem like a really straightforward and simple demo, and you're wondering why I'm doing this, and there is a reason, and that is that there's hair. And hair can be fun. So I'm going to make my brush smaller, so I'm not selecting any of his hair. I want all of the selection that I'm making right here to just be in between. Okay, there we go. So it did a good, good job of selecting everything but the hair. So, but we can't quite tell because of how we're seeing this mask. So this is a good scenario where we want to, we would want to change our mask visualization. Okay, so I'll click right here where it says show mask. That's what we see red right now. I'm going to change that from mode right down here where it says overlay to transparency. Voila. Now when we look at it, we can see what we have selected. And we actually do have some of him selected and we also have some of his hair selected up here okay so if i change the oops if i change the um, show mask properties to have no visibility then we know what we have selected and what we don't okay so that is why this is an important view to use so if you are making a bunch of selections you should really do yourself a favor and try the different mask options because it is so easy once you uh, toy around with those a little bit. So I've d I've done some add markers outside. I want to exclude uh, there was a couple places in here that um, we saw that I want to exclude there to make sure that we have his shoulders there and then this hair here is where I was going to make some adjustments all right so we want to select him mind you not the background and so I'm going to get click right down here at the bottom and invert our selection so now we know we have him and we don't see a halo of blue around the edges of him that's great we knew that however on his hair we also knew that there were some things that were happening on his hair that we didn't particularly like if we're gonna make edits to him or the background and change the background dramatically so I can touch on that right now. So here we are set back to, we have our mask layer here and then we have our basic adjustment layer. So if I m modify the, whoops, if I forget what I'm doing and modify the wrong one, if I modify uh, him, for example, and we make a very drastic change to exposure, then we can see where there are little bits of the edge where there's some hair and background that doesn't quite match or add up. So we want to refine that. Okay. So first things first, we have him selected with this whole inverted mask thing, right? Um, what we want to do is use our expand and matting sliders. In this case, I'll use the matting slider increase to three and the expand slider just needs to come up a little tiny bit and that helps with our edge condition on that hair in this particular situation okay let's see here and oh yeah so another okay so I, I pointed out that we use presets whenever we can because that's kind of the easiest and quickest way to get a look in exposure or to give something a defined look so here is our before image and then we put our auto adjustments on that image, which I just updated. I think I turned one of them off. And now we'll go to our second layer where we have him selected. And then something like this makes a, a good example where we can put a uh, some sort of tone or something like that that we want to be gentle, right? So this guy being an, a performing artist, um, if we do something that has a lot of coloring to it, uh, like, well, let's do one of the yellowing ones. Those are fine like this Polaroid with creamy highlights preset. 
I try to st stay away from cyan tones on skin. I don't think it does that great of a job on making skin look great. But anyway, so now we'll take our blown highlights uh, preset and tone that down just to give him that look separate from that background color. You know, so then we can take, if we wanted to, we can um, let's we can duplicate this layer now, and then take our mask that we had, right? And we want the opposite of that mask for this layer. And then we can find another preset instead of that 669 layer that we had, the yellowing color. We can go with something that will add, you know, a different tone to change the background. See how that background color is changing? Or we can just change it ourselves inside of exposure here on the color panel. We can uh, add our own color. Uh-huh or really whatever we want. You can see how it's doing that, that background. Oh yeah, world of possibilities. Anyway, I don't really like that, but we saw it. All right, so uh, I think we're doing pretty good on time. Uh, I think that we are doing pretty good on what we've seen. I have one more scenario that I'd like to show you, and that is a super tough image or a two, super tough detailed selection, and uh, it's this one right here. Um, why would I show you a super tough detailed selection? Because I enjoy squirming and uh, challenging myself. No, I and everybody has a bunch of different things when you're working in exposure, so challenging situations will come up. This is one of them. Uh, the reason being, I will show you. Uh, reason being is a selection like this. I want to select this insect on its own, this butterfly. Why is it going to be tough? Okay, the contrast changes in this edge right along here. You can see, let's zoom in. So this contrast change goes from white to black, then white. Well, it's not so sharp that it's easy to read. It's blurry, right? So that's going to be easy for the algorithm to mix up with some other tones. So we'll have to be careful there. Um, same thing here. Oh, this is really tiny and fuzzy. That's hard. This, the tone here, if you look at the color, um, if you look at the, what? Highlights and shadows right here, the values. That blends right in there with the tones of the leaf. Same thing here. These blend in with the background. This highlight here, yeah, okay. So it all goes on and on. And we have things that are not sharp and things that are extremely sharp, like the little fuzzy bits on his back. So yeah, we're gonna make this selection really quick. So I've done this uh, a bunch of times because this is one of the images that I work on when I'm doing stuff here to learn how to use the tools because it's a difficult uh, photo or diff difficult selection to make. And But when we're done with it, you actually have a really good selection and you can do a lot with it. Um, and so let us reset and go through the wheel of pain once again. Just kidding, it's really easy. Okay, border marker. So when we go to the selection on this this particular instance, I would go to border marker like normal and sketch all around the outside and fill it all in and say that's where I want the border, that I want this to be the object. But I think that the polygon is gonna be the simplest way in the long term of making this selection. Okay, so my goal in doing this was to try to get I, I think that the lowest number of markers that I've been able to successfully get this selected is about 40. So if I can get under 40, then I did it just perfectly. Or I've done, I've done a great job at it. Um, okay, so I'm going to do the polygon tool. And um, remember that the polygon, you can fully adjust it so that it works, you know, to however you like. So we can add markers and we can add hand-drawn areas if we want to as well. Now, there are a few tricks up uh, your sleeve here as you're putting these markers in, and that is that you have a little bit of thickness to work with, knowing that I'm going to have to come back and do some refinement. So the reason that I'm using the polygon down here is that the legs, these little tiny leggies, are always tough because of, you know, a lot of things. The other reasons that I told you already Okay, 
And you can also see that I am not really trying to get those edges as clean as possible. And that's because uh, in the first few times that I tried to do this selection process, I made a whole bunch of points down there and it really didn't help me out. So save yourself some time. You can always go back and refine it just like I'm doing here to make sure that your edge is exactly where you want it to be. And the more, and the polygon tool really when it comes to refining it is I think the uh, easiest to, um, to control in the sense that you say, this is exactly what I want to select right here to exposure, if that makes any sense. So as we go through here and add these little bits, it's doing a pretty good job. Now, uh, it's tempting to try to make these little leg bits um, perfectly line up and I'm just not gonna do it I'm gonna I don't want to um, waste my time you know uh, trying to move things around and make it just perfect because I have the ability to add um, points or not points but add markers okay, we're getting pretty good now let's get one more in there yes All right, so now, so now we have our polygon selection. That's pretty good, but we, I can see that we have some stuff on the edges here. Let's um, go to my show mask here. You can see those, if I turn the mask uh, opacity all the way down, you can see the little bits around the edges here. So we can just keep it like this, and then we can add some exclude markers. I'm gonna make it smaller again, and then I will use the Alt button to do the same thing if I need to. I know that I don't want this edge, so I'm going to try to uh, spread or uh, share the load here and let that. Oh, didn't work. Undo. So I'll bring the edge in like this instead and have to do it the hard way. And that is to paint this in with a little bit more control. So I have the base width wider and the border width smaller, which gives me a little bit more of a handle on how to operate it. Now remember that all you're trying to do is get rid of the things you know you don't want and then tell the algorithm to find the things that you do want for you. And I kind of want to do it in the least amount of clicks possible because I'm lazy, I think. No, because I want it to be easy. It should be easy. Come on. All right. Okay, we're getting pretty close. We're getting out of the nitty gritty now. So if I, if I scroll in here and we'll zoom down to, oops, there we go. We'll zoom down to his legs. And we can see what I'm fighting with here. How his leg kind of bends down here and it's on this green tone. Yep. So I'm still using exclude markers here for this little bit of touch up that I'm doing. And now I have a bunch of markers in here. Oops. Yeah. Nope. That's too wide. This is the workflow. Yeah, it's a lot of like, oh, oh, I just had it, and then I moved. Darn. There it goes. All right, so um, that's that size. So we can go back in here and um, refine all these, which is kind of the best way to do things. Once once you get the selection uh, operating the way that you want it to, see that has, that's a two, then uh, once, once you get the sizing of your, um, of your uh, markers down, and you know it, you should be able to um, dial them all in a little bit easier. But again, it's one of those things that you know you as you work through um, using the the program, you kind of get used to how you work. So as I've been working with the developers here at the uh, office or in on the team, um, I've noticed that everybody uses these tools really interchangeably and they all use them differently. 
And I think that is a real testament to how dynamic the tools are, but it also shows that, you know, there's no one way of doing anything. And um, because of that, I think that there's a lot of flexibility to use these kind of, you know, in whichever way you might see fit. Oh man, I'm getting so close to having this dialed in. I only have 16 markers. I know I had to fiddle with them quite a bit, but yes. Oh, it's so close. I think I set my goal pretty high as to want to do that with just a few markers. But oh my gosh, so close. Yes. Oh, that was just a touch too much. All right. There. Woo! Okay. Now let's zoom back out. All right. How many did I do it in? Oops. Okay. Let's go back and we'll take a look. I did it in 23 markers. That is almost half of what I did it with before. I'm glad that we went with the polygon tool. It did take a little bit of extra time to trace around that guy when we were selecting it, but. It really was worth it in the end. Whoops. So this mask was actually kind of simple to make. I mean, for how um, for how detailed it is, and for what we've done in the selection. Oh, we have it in black and white mode. You can see there's a whole bunch of different options for how you see the the preview what you're doing here inside of Exposure. Okay. So we'll zoom back out. So that um, concludes our demonstration today. Thank you again for tuning in today. Um, I want to get in, if you would like to get in contact with other exposure users, we would love to help you do so. You can do that in our Facebook group, the Exposure Users Facebook group. Also, you can post your work and share it with us and others on Instagram. Please do so and use our hashtag MyExposureEdit. I want to thank everybody again for your interest in exposure and for joining us.